Hello, friends. My name is Alex Krekus, and I want to welcome you to the Finding Lost Civilization series. Now, today I'm trekking in the town of Antiquera, which is located in the province of Andalusia in the country of Spain. I'm here specifically to visit several ancient dolmens that are located in this area. Now, you might ask yourself, what is a dolmen? Well, dolmens are often referred to as portal tombs or portal graves. And although there are many different construction methods for these type of structures, one of the major characteristics is that they consist of megalithic boulders, which is to say very large stones. Oftentimes there are at least two, if not more, upright stones with one capstone which forms the ceiling. I'll tell you, this is going to be an exciting adventure, and I invite you to come trek with me to see the dolmens of Antiquera. <music> We're in a town of Antiquera in Andalusia, Spain, and I'm about to enter what's called a dolmen, and this is a burial chamber. But look at this. The first thing that I countered right over here at the entrance to the dolmen is this beautiful stone over here that has what's known as cupules. This whole stone is covered with cupules. And over here you can see where the entrance is. There's a large boulder over here that has been cut out like an entrance door. And at one time right over here you can see there was a roof over the dolmen. It opens up right now so that we can actually enter it. But as we enter the dolmen you'll actually see the roof. Now take a look at this as we enter again. Here is another beautiful boulder, an upright boulder, and again covered with cupules. And again you can see this is the remnants of the ceiling right over here. It came across and was supported by these upright boulders over here. And again you'll see another upright boulder over here, a big slab of stone that's been carved full of cupule symbols. Well. As we start to enter the dome, and you can see what it once looked like right at the entrance. There's the roof, so to speak. As I said, it's been cleared so that we can enter it. But look at this right over here, these large stone slabs upright and across on the top forming this burial chamber.
friends in close proximity to the Vera Dolmen is another much larger dolmen known as the Menga Dolmen. Now what I find interesting about this dolmen is that when it was entered in the 1800s, the remains of several hundred people were found therein. Now before we leave the Vieira Dolmen, I want to make a comment about the couple petroglyphs that we saw at the entrance. From an archaeological perspective, a couple is a circular man-made hollow on the surface of a rock or rock slab. I believe that these couples are symbols, which is to say that they represent or stand for or suggest an idea, a belief or image, which is usually specific to the culture preparing the symbol. One can say that symbols or a means of complex communication that often can have multiple levels of meaning. Unfortunately, the meaning of the couple petroglyphs at the Diera Dolmen has been lost in time. before us we have this wonderful dolmen and a fantastic thing is that you will see exactly what I see at the same time there's no rehearsal over here there's no pre-screening pre-filming we're going into this together we're gonna see exactly the same thing at the same moment and at the same time and I hope that you experience the same joy that I do as we encounter this wonderful dolmen over here as you can see there's a grate now here to protect it now the interesting thing about this dolmen is it's extremely large. Look at these fantastic slabs that were carved standing upright. These are at least seven feet tall, at least seven feet tall. And I would say at least 12 feet across. Look at these large slabs that were carved by the ancients to place over these upright boulders over here. Now these slabs form the supporting beam for the roof. I mean, this is incredible. Now, the fantastic thing to wonder about this dolmen, this burial chamber, is the weight of these slabs. We're talking about tons. And can you imagine an ancient man taking these slabs, placing them upright over here, and then carving additional slabs that are even bigger than the ones that we see here on a side to form the roof? Now, this is incredible. Well, right here in the center, we have a supporting column. So let's go into this dolmen together. Let's explore this dolmen and see what we can find. This is a very interesting feat, I guess, of engineering, I would say. I see right here inside this dolmen that there are three supporting central columns. But my goodness, look at these roof slabs. They are incredibly large. How did ancient man actually place them here? This is really fascinating. Oftentimes, I think today, we think that prehistoric man was somewhat of a person that didn't have much brain power. However, I would say that humans had as much brain power 10,000 years ago as they have today. I think they thought just like we think today. The only difference between us and man 10,000 years ago is that we have the knowledge of technology that we've gained over 10,000 years. But basically, we're all still the same. Well, as I'm here in the back end of the chamber, you can see right over here, there's some sort of uh, display, I guess, a great. I don't know what it is. Let's take a look at it together. As I said, you're going to see exactly what I'm seeing at the same time. My goodness, look at this. It's a ring. It looks like a well, and I'm looking down there. My goodness, I can see water at the bottom. This looks like a well.
Well, friends, thus far, our journey has truly been exciting. And along each step of the way, I kept asking myself, how were these dolmen constructed? In the Menga dolmen, one ceiling capstone alone weighs 180 tons. And I couldn't conceive in my mind how such a structure was built. Well, fortunately, I'll be able to show you in this next segment the construction of the Menga Dolmen. I tell you, this is really exciting. Antakera, in the south of the Iberian Peninsula, is the site of one of Europe's most important megalithic complexes. The largest of the three megalithic constructions in the complex was built some 5,000 years ago. It is known as the Menga Dolmen. The scenery was very different to today. The hand of man had barely affected the environment. Dense pine woods covered the mountainsides and scattered oak groves stretched down to the banks of the rivers that cut through the plains. The landscape was dotted with ponds and lakes, bordered by alder, mountain ash and hazelnut trees. The builders of Menga were the first peoples to farm this fertile land. Many small settlements have been discovered in the area. The inhabitants of these settlements were farmers and herders. They also hunted, fished and gathered fruit and made things such as flint tools. These peoples began to travel to an open-air village at the site, known as the Cerro Marimacho. The communities shared religious codes, as well as a notion of belonging to a tribe or clan. The dolmen was clearly built along an alignment pointing towards the monumental Peña, a remarkable mountain whose form evokes a sleeping giant. Using stone hoes with wooden handles and deer shoulder blades for shovels, they cleared the brush and began to prepare the terrain. After removing the soil and exposing the underlying rock, they began to level and prepare the surface in order to lay out the perimeter of the trench in which to lay the foundations for the slabs that would become the structure's walls.
We stand before a landscape whose most powerful feature is the fragmented profile of La Peña, an icon creating a permanent dialogue between the universe and humankind. Using pigments to mark the lines and string and wooden poles to take measurements, they laid out the perimeter of the building. The entire community helped dig the ditch using deer horns and pointed stakes. Once finished, ramps of soil and stones were made so that the stone slabs that would become the walls could be slid into position in the foundations. Wooden or stone wedges were forced into the natural fissures of the rock and boiling water was poured in to cause a split. The stone slabs were fixed to a wooden structure and slid over rollers that moved on rails. All the men and women of the community helped move the stones. Slowly, the slab was moved closer. When it reached the edge of the trench, a weight was placed on the end so that it tipped over and slid into place in the foundations. With the help of levers, the slab was placed upright. Then it was bolstered at the base with boulders and the gaps were filled with earth and stones. One by one, the additional slabs of the chamber walls were put into place following a pre-established order so that each slab supported the next. Once the slab was near the trench, the rock was honed to make it fit with those already in place. When the walls were finished, the central pillars were put into place. What we see before us is much more than a geographical reality. It is a state of mind, a centre of the world, where the sacred is manifested in all its glory. A complex series of questions and answers arises around the Peña, as if it were an existential discourse or a meditation on life and death.
One by one, following an established order, the slabs were put into place until the roof was completed. Once the process was finished, the material filling the inside of the chamber was removed and the roof slabs gradually descended until they were resting on the walls. Finally, successive layers of earth and stones were used to cover the monument, forming the tumulus that gave its final appearance. For these agricultural and herding communities, Megalithic monumental architecture may have been a way of ideologically establishing the presence and roots of the society on the land. As funerary chambers, some megalithic structures were true repositories of genealogical and cultural identity, as well as places to conduct the ceremonies related to the symbolic world of the societies that built them. In its formidable stone setting, La Peña stands out like a gigantic question mark. The presence of Menga evoked a transcendence of atmospheres and settings when in the uncertainty of early times, it became an existential milestone. It is a territory without name, whose imprint contextualizes our own survival. A mythical place where the strewn fragments of our ancestors are gathered. Well, friends, I hope you've enjoyed this trek that we've taken together here in the town of Antikyra to visit these ancient dolmens. And so I invite you to keep trekking with me as I travel through Spain, searching for signs of ancient life. Mm -hmm.